All right, now we're going to start uh, working on graphing uh, equations in two variables. Um, we're going to start by doing just one equation in two variables. Then we're going to look at maybe doing two equations in two variables at the same time, which would be a system of equations. Then we're going to look at, well, what if instead of an equation, we had an inequality? And we'll look at graphing inequalities and graphing systems of inequalities, okay? So first, we're going to get started on just the idea of graphing. Um, so I wanted to just use a, a couple of examples to start with that kind of show you the big picture. And then you'll have some homework and all where you can review a lot of the um, preliminary ideas if you haven't done this in a while. All right, if you've taken math classes here at, at um, CV, we do graphing actually back in Math 98, but we don't do a whole lot in Math 100. And I know a lot of you started in Math 100. Okay, so um, what we're going to be doing is trying to graph these equations. Okay, there's both X's and Y's in them. So when we graph them, we're going to be trying to find solutions to these, and the solutions are going to be ordered pairs. So the solutions to an equation in two variable are going to be ordered pairs of numbers. And it, there won't just be one solution, there'll be a whole bunch of ordered pairs. So the idea is going to be for us to figure out several of the ordered pairs that satisfy the equation and then get those plotted in what we call a coordinate plane. So you may remember doing some of this. And if not, I kind of review it in the homework too. So instead of one number line, we have two. We have an x-axis and a y-axis. All right, so typically what, what you wind up doing is uh, organizing your solutions, your ordered pairs that are solutions to this equation in a, in a chart. Some people call it a t-chart. So, and then once we get those ordered pairs, we're, we're just going to plot them. And I really, on this one, I want you to get to where you can find the ordered pair solutions without doing a lot of algebraic work. So if you can do it without having to write a whole lot, that's actually a good thing, okay? Because then the graphing doesn't seem so tedious. So the technique I'm using here, we're really going to be working on graphing primarily by plotting points, okay? That's a very nice approach, good in general, that works really well in a lot of cases, okay? And so like with this one, I need to find some solutions to this. It's going to be up to me to pick a number to plug in for either X or Y. There's no real advantage to which one to plug into first here. So I might just choose something and I might want to pick something that, that will be easy for me to work with. So maybe like a zero for the X. Okay, if I do that, I put a zero in for the X, I need to plug it in there. I'm going to do the work down here. I need to plug the zero into the equation for X because that's where I put the zero. And then I'm just going to figure out what the Y would have to be. Now this part down here, if you can avoid writing it, do. See, when you plug in a zero, what's nice about that is it knocks that out. And so I can just think, all right, well, negative three, times something has to be 12, that has to be negative 4. But it's okay if you're not comfortable doing it in your head to just go ahead and use the algebra that you, you know to get that the y would be negative 4 when the x was 0. Okay, so that gives you one ordered pair. And so zeros, plugging in zeros for x or y is sometimes a really good way to do things. Let me plug a 0 in for the y and see what happens. So if I did that, then right there, I'm going to put a zero, zero for the Y. And again, what's nice about plugging in zeros is it knocks out that whole term. And so this one, you ought to really be able to do in your head since there's no integer issues. And see how X turns out to be six? When you divide by two, you get X equals six. So when the Y was zero, the X was six. So we've found two ordered pairs that satisfy that equation. Now, some of you have done some graphing before. So you might have known before you got started that this fits the pattern. This equation right here fits the pattern of a, of, of a line, a linear equation. If you knew that, then two points is all you need to graph a line. 
I usually recommend finding maybe one more just to be safe. Um, and it's not always easy to get a third nice point until you get more experience with this. Like I can tell plugging in a three for X would be a, a, a way to get a good, nice point. But when you're first doing it, that's kind of hard to do. So you might just pick a, a, another value for X or Y. So say I pick a one for X. It doesn't have to work out nice. If I plug in the one for X, I just have a little more work to do. So I, I'm just gonna go ahead and, and do a little more algebraic work and find out what the Y turns out to be. So when I do that, I have a little more solving. Maybe can't do this one in my head so easily. So I'm gonna subtract two. I'm left with negative three Y equals 10. And when I divide by the negative three, I get the Y is negative 10 thirds. But when I'm graphing, I like a mixed number so I can see where to plot that. So negative three and a third, okay? And so what I'm doing right now is kind of giving you the overview of what graphing equations in two variables is like. You generally need to first find some solutions, some ordered pairs that satisfy the equation. Then, the, then you go from there and you plot those and start trying to reveal what the picture is, the, what the graph is associated with that, that equation, okay? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and graph these three. All right, now you may not remember this and you'll have to review a little bit more, but your x-axis, the positives go this way. You don't need to take time to label these if you're going by one unit, but if you're gonna change it and go by like your first tick mark is two, you should label it. I'm gonna not put, I'm gonna label every other one. So this would be one, then two, then three, then four. And I'm not gonna label all, all the time just to save us time. So if you're going by one unit on your X and your Y, let's just agree we don't have to tell people. We'll assume that that's what you're doing. With the Y axis, the positives go up, the negatives go down. And then that spot right there is called the origin. Okay, that's zero right there in the middle. Zero, zero, actually. Okay, so we're gonna plot zero, negative four. That one's tricky. A lot of times people mistakenly plot it over here. It's not there, that's incorrect, because the X was zero, so you can't go left or right. You have to be right there, and then the Y was negative four, so then you go down four. And then six, zero is gonna be over here. I'm gonna have to extend this just a little bit. So let me go out a little further, put a couple more units to get out to six. Six for X, zero for Y, so that would be right there. And then the third point, one and then negative three and a third, turns out to be a point that appears to fall on the line connecting those two. So like if we know it's a line, then just two or three points is all it takes. I still recommend at least three, so you're, you'll check, you'll be double checking your work, okay? All right, now what's really, what this line really represents, I really want you to hear me on this and think about this, it is a way of indicating all the other ordered pairs that satisfy that equation. See, there's too many for you to list. This is just a, a selection of three of them. So think about it as infinitely many ordered pairs. Any one of them would be an ordered pair that would satisfy that equation. So what you have here is you have a table. We call that a table. Let me do it in red. Okay, this is a table. This is a graph, okay, and this is an equation, but all three are just different representations of the same relation in two variables. You're just showing it in different ways, and what's nice about the graph is it's a visual representation of all the solutions. There's too many for you to just list, okay? All right, so let's try graphing something maybe we're a little less familiar with. So we, the process of plotting points works well on, on things like this. It's just you might need to plot find and then plot more ordered pairs since you're less familiar with it. Okay, so let's get set up. This would be a good time to get some graph paper that you could be using just to save time drawing the coordinate planes. Okay, I'm not gonna label these. Our assumption will be that I'm going by one on each. 
Each tick mark is just one more unit. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on finding some ordered pairs that satisfy that equation. Now this one has the Y by itself. All right, one thing that usually bothers students when they do this is that nobody prescribes for you what you have to plug in. That's kind of up to you. And I always get the question about how do you know what to plug in? Well, think of it as being like uh, a good thing. It's like you have the freedom to pick stuff that works out easily. So for instance, with this one, since Y is on a side by itself, it's much better for you to pick X's and then calculate the Y. You'll be able to do those really in your head. You won't need to do so much writing if you make good choices. I'm not gonna pick something like seven or one half or negative 23. I'm gonna pick things like a zero. Because when I plug a zero in and square it, zero squared minus four, I don't really have to write that down. Can you see how that turns out to be negative four? If I plug in a one, won't that be one squared minus four? One squared minus four? I, I probably don't even have to write that. One minus four would be three. Negative three, sorry. Okay, if I put a two in, I'd get four minus four. I'd get a zero, okay? And if I put a three in, I'd get nine minus four, which would be five. All right, so let's look at just those. Zero, negative four, one, negative three, two is zero. All right now, going from here to here, I went to the right just one unit and I went up one unit. But now I went to the right unit, one unit, and I went up three. Okay, this is not linear. Okay, this one went up just one unit, then I went up three units, and at three, I'm up to one, two, three, four, five. I went up five units. This has a little bit of a curve to it, it looks like. Okay, and just fudge it when you're hand drawing it, okay. All right, so that's that. Now that's not the finished product though. See, you've got to investigate a little bit over on this left-hand side. Um, over here, we haven't, uh, on to the left of the y-axis, I haven't really picked any values, so I need to do that. I need to see, well, what happens with negative one or negative two or negative three, okay? And because it's negative, I might wanna plug it in at least till I see what, what happens. But that negative one has to get squared. So those parentheses are important, especially if you're using your calculator. So you're gonna get one minus four, that's negative three. If you put in a negative two and square it and subtract four, you're gonna get four minus four, that's gonna be zero. Notice we're getting negative three again when we plugged in a negative one. We got zero again when I plugged in negative two. This is gonna give us five again because the negative three got squared and that makes it nine minus four. And so here we are at negative one, negative three, negative two, zero, and negative three, five. There's some symmetry there. And you see this doesn't turn out to be a line. It turns out to be kind of a U-shaped thing. Ugh, can't get a nice graph. The way my arm is sitting. Okay, something like that doesn't come back in on itself, keeps going out a little bit as it goes up. But this right here, this turned out to be a line. Okay, this was linear. The graph was a line. This one turned out to be what's called a parabola. And we're gonna learn, we're gonna start thinking about what it is about the equation here that might tell us that that's the graph to expect. Because if I kind of know what to expect, then I maybe don't have to pick so many points. So right now, you have to pick enough points. Nobody can specify how many, enough points to where the pattern reveals itself. And so any other point on this curve would have been an ordered pair that would have satisfied that equation. So again, you've got three representations, your equation, your table, your graph, but they're all the same, rep the same relationship, the same relation. It's just different representations. Okay, so that's the overview of what it is we're trying to do. There's a homework that's going to help you with the basics, like finding ordered pairs and plotting points. Okay, all right, let me go ahead and um, stop sharing on this one.